In a previous video, we looked at the old directional aircraft beacon just outside the former Royal Naval Air Station at Stretton near Warrington. The wooden tower it stood on still stands to this day in a farmer's field. One of the lesser known functions carried out by personnel from RNAS Stretton was the operation of a site just to the south of the airfield known as Northern Radar Control, situated near the village of Antrobus. Northern Radar can be traced back as far as 1940 when a small armed army convoy appeared on Whitley Reed near what became RNAS Stretton and secretly tested a new radar. These tests were in preparation for the construction of the new airfield. By the 1st of August that year, enough land, 465 acres, had been acquired in Appleton and High Lee to build the airfield on. The radar station was built at Antrobus in 1941, with the electronics and instruments being installed by GE Taylor & Co of London. Its wartime use and immediately after is unknown to this day, and it was regarded top secret by those aware of its existence. The location of Stretton was in the middle of a portion of controlled airspace known as the Manchester Control Zone. The airspace or zone covered several airfields, the first being Manchester Airport or what was RAF Ringway, Woodford Airfield, the Avro factory just to the east, Barton, a small general aviation airfield near Trafford Park, RNAS Stretton, the now demolished United States Air Force Base at Burton Wood near Warrington, Liverpool and the former Speak Airport, Southport and the old Royal Naval Air Station at Burzco. This portion of airspace was known for conflicts of movements and often led to near misses. In 1952 it was modified for use by Stretton's air traffic control to ensure the safety of flights into and out of Stretton as well as the surrounding airfields. RNAS Stretton was mainly a weekend flying station with activity from the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve aircrew. This activity increased the normal air traffic in the area alongside traffic going into the previously mentioned airfields. In addition to this local traffic was the additional problem of the main north-south airway known as Amber 1 which passed through the middle of the zone used mainly by international flights. On the 13th of February 1953, trials commenced at Antrobus under Lieutenant J.R.G. with a view to controlling all naval traffic. A few weeks later, after some 1,500 sorties, it was also providing a service to civilian aircraft through the zone. A few weeks later, after some 1,500 sorties, it was also providing a service to civilian aircraft passing through the zone. The use of the facility was then offered to the Ministry of Civil Aviation. In order to establish more safety into this mixture of aircraft, a joint Royal Navy and Ministry of Civil Aviation radar control unit was established at Antrobus, called Northern Radar. This facility was situated a few miles south of Stretton on isolated farmland. The prime function of Northern Radar was to enable safe and efficient flights of both military and civil traffic within the Manchester Control Zone. The civilian air traffic controller's task was to maintain an efficient flow of traffic in and out of Manchester Ringway and Liverpool Speak airports. The US Army Air Force at Burton Wood used Northern Radar on a need you when I need you basis, only calling for assistance when they felt the need arose and that was a bit unorthodox even in those days. Two types of radar were used on the site, a radar for low coverage and a radar for higher coverage. There was an overlap between the top of the low coverage and the bottom of the higher coverage radar. This meant that before an aircraft disappeared from the screen on the low radar, it appeared on the bottom of the screen for the higher radar, giving controllers a view of the aircraft at all times. This was in the days before IFF and squawking. The controller had to instruct the pilot to make a 90 degree turn either left or right and watch the echo on the screen respond to identify the plane that they were talking to. The low coverage radar was a Type 277, a standard ship radar at that time. The aerial was simply chicken wire nailed to a large wooden frame rotated by an electric motor. 
The visualisation of this radar in the ops room was on a PPI or plan position indicator with the familiar rotating sweeping arm on a circular TV type screen. The higher radar was a Type 15 of similar construction to the Type 227, whose presentation in the ops room was different. This was an A-scope display with the incoming aircraft being displayed vertical on a screen with side lobes coming off at various levels to indicate the aircraft's height. It was quite premature but it made flying in the Manchester control zone much much safer. Communications on the other hand were more modern. Each civil controller had direct talkback to his opposite number at either Manchester or Liverpool by a small directly switchable loudspeaker or earphones as required, meaning they could liaise directly with incoming and outgoing flights. The naval controllers had similar facilities to the airfield at Stretton and sat side by side with their civilian controllers working together to identify each other's aircraft. When naval aircraft became airborne from Stretton, the pilot had to change their radio frequency to northern radar for clearance through the control zone to their destination. Maintenance of the equipment was responsibility of the Ministry of Civil Aviation, who had several on-site technicians with a fully equipped electronic workshop. Northern radar was placed under enormous pressure, so the serviceability and the operational status of the site was of extreme importance, as any downtime caused congestion of both Manchester and Liverpool airports. The naval personnel came to the site daily from Stretton, while the civilian personnel came over from Manchester in a minibus with their air traffic control assistants. There was usually four air traffic controllers plus two assistants, and on the naval side two controllers and two assistants. The naval officer in charge was Lieutenant Commander Morris Graham and Lieutenant Kit Carson. The site of Northern Radar is now part of a farm and until recent years most of the buildings were still standing, albeit in a sorry state. The farm was sold and the buildings were demolished to make way for a new private farming property. If you'd like to find out more about the homing beacon just down the road then I'll link the video in the description below.